we have, where'd you go, Mark? He's here. Oh, oh, there you are, Mark Savage from PSCU. And he is going to be talking to AVCU about how we're looking at getting some ATM machines and then having them, um, you know, performed with our help with PSCU and AVCU. And so that it will be like a self manage and then the credit unions won't really have to do a lot of work to continue maintaining the ATM system. Yep. As, so, a, as an option. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. Sorry to interrupt. Ah, ah, no worries. Um, and with me, I have some folks on our side. Um, I have Lori Bash um, from our, uh, our product side. And then I also have uh, Carl from our partner um, in our managed services program, uh, ATD. And um, Carl, do you know if, um, if Trey's joining us? Uh, Trey's actually the one that says iPhone on the uh, list oh. there. So okay. I'm here, Mark. Absolute financial and then Trey is with ATD. He's the one that actually... Uh, has the uh, the partnership with the managed service program, and I'm an equipment service provider that works exclusively with Trey. So we'll we'll kind of lay all that out and who the players are and, and yep. what it is that we do here. So um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to chat with you guys this afternoon. Um, so just to kind of level set um, and, and kind of do some quick introductions. Again, I'll, I'll let those guys get a little bit more detailed. Um, my role here at PSU is I'm, I'm a solutions consultant um, manager here, and I work with folks like the association to kind of bring some of the solutions to life for some of the things that uh, you're looking to do. Um, Lori, do uh, you want to take a, a, a second to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Lori Bash. Um, I've been here at PSU for five years, and I am the ATM product strategic product manager, so I direct... Uh, kind of where we're going strategically with our ATM product um, and own, you know, most of the products under ATM. And in addition, um, you know, I own our ATM managed services program as well, uh, which I know we're going to be talking about today. So anything else I'm missing, Mark? No. Nope. Okay. Trey? Um, my name is Trey Pratt. Um, I am the president and CEO of Automated Transaction Delivery or ATD. Uh, been in the industry for over 20 years, uh, running and operating anywhere from a few thousand retail ATMs to um, hundreds and hundreds of financial institution ATMs. And uh, we also have a mobile event division that we do a lot of fairs and festivals and brand for all of our uh, FI and credit union uh, partners. Um, we, uh, we basically have been working with PSCU on our managed services piece, we're kind of the wizard behind the curtain that makes all the pieces work and the headaches go away. Thanks, Trey. Carl? Hey, everybody. I'm Carl Schreiber. Uh, I'm the uh, president and CEO of Absolute Financial Services, and uh, I've been here 26 years. We've been in business about 27 and a half, providing ATMs and other financial equipment services uh, to financial institutions and, and partners like Trey at ATD and, and PSEU, um, everything, every brand, every type of uh, ATM condition, new or refurbished, as well as uh, some other products and services. So looking forward to, to hopefully working with some of your folks as well. Great, thank you. So the way I kind of like to start off talking about what our managed services solution is, is, is kind of anything you want it to be. So what do I mean by that? So when you start to think about managed services, there's a lot of definitions to that term. Um, everything from just providing first line or second line services all the way up to, um, hey, take me out of the ATM game. In our world for PSCU, managed services can be all of those things. So on one end of the spectrum, if you as a credit union came up to us and said, hey, um, you know, working through the association, we're looking for, we're not happy with our first or second line service providers or cash servicer for that point. We're looking for some new vendors to take care of the ATMs that we have today. Can you, the association slash PSCU, provide those services to us? And the answer is absolutely yes. So that's kind of one end of the spectrum. 
if you came to us and said, okay, association, we have some older ATMs. We need to kind of replace those ATMs or upgrade those ATMs. Um, we're looking for new hardware. Can we purchase those hardwares through you? And the answer there would be absolutely yes. At the other end of the spectrum, it would be, hey, you know what association? We're, we don't have the expertise. We don't have the resources. We don't feel um, that we want to be in the ATM business anymore. Can you take us out of the ATM business by taking over our existing terminals where you would own them, you would service them, you would do anything and everything uh, needed to drive to run them and let our members have access to those terminals? The answer would be absolutely yes. In addition to that, um, with, with some of the credit unions that I know I've been uh, working with, uh, the association with, um, some of them may not have ATMs and they'll be looking to um, add an ATM into their program or in, into, their, um, into the credit union, but may not, again, want the responsibility for them. So we can also do that for you as well. So if you have an ATM and want us to take that over for you, we can do that. Or if you are new to the ATM business, but you don't want it, you want to have an ATM, but not lift a finger for it. Again, those are things that we can do. Um, so it truly is an a la carte type solution uh, that we've been talking with the association so that each individual credit union can have different needs or different scenarios that we'll be able to accommodate um, based upon, again, what you're looking to do. We have all different types of technologies available to you. So I, I guess on one end of the spectrum, we have terminals that um, are just straight cash dispensing ATMs. And we can go all the way up to the latest and greatest technology with the interactive teller machines or ITMs um, and anything in between. So it really is um, up to you um, and again, each individual credit union and, and even within each individual location. So you may, need, you may have a need for multiple ATMs where you want one to be this technology and another one just to be a straight cash dispenser. So again, we can mix and match even with the technologies that we have available uh, to you. Um, when it comes to cash, we also have cash services as well. So utilizing um, your cash, so again, each branch or each credit union um, can place those orders for cash. We would then take that cash, manage it for each terminal um, as, term, uh, as far as uh, what each terminal gets loaded with. We would set up replenishment schedules. We would go out and settle the ATMs uh, for you whenever, there's, uh, whenever we need to replenish or settlement schedule based upon your individual needs. And then from a servicing standpoint, um, if we have those terminals under our ownership, we would also provide that first line and second line servicing um, capabilities for you, as well as terminal driving solutions for you as well. Um, so that's kind of it at a high level. Um, Trey or, or, or Carl, did I miss anything or you guys want to add anything to that? I don't or believe I so. Great job. That'd be great. <laughs> No, no. I mean, look, you, I always love getting on these calls with you, Mark, because you do such a thorough uh, explanation of the, the overall service. The only thing I can add is, is just another way of what Mark had said. We really try to come in and act as consultants with the, with the credit union. We don't want to force them into, in, into, well, this is kind of what I want. So, yeah, I guess so, uh, which we've had a lot of other manufacturers try to push things like that. We really try to say, hey, look, why can't I think we lost Trey there. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was maybe just me, like mid sentence it went away. Nope. So so what, what Trey was actually saying again is each individual credit union, we can customize the um, the program to fit the specific credit union's needs. Um, uh, again, whether that's technology or services to whatever it is you want. Um, the great thing about our program is, and again, just to kind of level set on who does what, 
PSCU will be the dr will drive your terminals for you. So um, providing you the, the, the terminal driving, the ATM communication services, the screen flows, the transaction sets, those are all things that are coming through PSCU from a driving perspective. Where Trey and Carl come in, um, uh, Carl, I can, I can kind of, I'll, I'll throw it over to you to, to, to kind of fill in what your specific role in here is, and then we'll, we'll backfill with Trey if he's not back on the phone yet. So, um, I'm here. Sorry again, about that, guys. Uh, no worries. So, again, PSCU will drive your terminals. Um, Carl, if you want to kind of throw in your, your piece to this and, and where you fit in into the conversation. Yeah, mine's more of the uh, nuts and bolts part of the operation on the back end, working with uh, ATD and uh, Trey's group. Uh, Trey's going to put the whole package together on, on the different pieces that the two of us offer. And, and my piece is providing a resource for, uh, for the ATMs and the products themselves, uh, getting, them, getting them rigged, getting them brought live, providing those first and second line uh, maintenance services for the products or the variation of whatever the different financial institutions may choose from A to Z on the different offerings that are going to be put out there with Trey. So uh, that's kind of it. I mean, our part is the, is the technical back end piece of this and providing products and services. Trey? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm good. So, and, and again, Trey is, is the company that would actually be doing the first line, second line servicing for you, the monitoring. Because one of the key components of this is making sure that the terminals are up and running um, so that, and, and that we're aware of what's happening with those terminals on your behalf to make sure that we maximize whatever uptime uh, we can for, for those terminals. So, so um, yes. If I was a credit union and I wanted to see if this is something that I would want to, you know, add to my list of services, what would I need and how should I compare it to, you know, if it, is worth me adding a new ATM a terminal? Great question. So um, a lot of that depends upon the current, your, your, your current situation. So if you have an ATM today and you're looking for us to um, kind of take over the servicing, take over the ownership, you know, whatever, again, your specific need would be here. The thing that you want to take a look at is number one, the ATM itself. Um, and, and what we'll do is we'll provide through the association some um, information that we'll need to collect to make sure we, we properly quote or, or um, have an idea of what you're looking for. But the things you want to take a look at are, number one, is the machine still a viable piece of machinery um, or is it kind of past its life? And if it's past its life, you know, what type of technology are you looking for? I mean, what, what are the things that you want to allow your members to do? Because that gives us an idea on what type of ATM we're going to want to put in that place. Whether it's a cash dispensing terminal, whether it's a deposit taking ATM, or whether it's a interactive teller machine. Because again, we can, we can take care of all of those things. So we'll need to collect some information about the existing ATM um, from you in order to um, get an idea of what you're looking for. And again, we would pass that information through the association for them to collect on, on your behalf. Um, the things that you're going to want to take a look at from off, I guess, to, to put a value onto this managed services is number one, what are the resource levels within the credit union? Do you have the expertise? Do you have the, 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 the personnel? Do you have the contacts in order to be able to truly run an efficient ATM program? Um, you know, if you're spending a lot of time on ATM settlement, if you're doing a lot of things regarding, you know, in, in a lot of cases, um, credit unions are their own service providers. They're the ones that are going out to the ATM and fixing it. So if you're spending a lot of time in those situations, fixing your own machines, is that really the best use of your time? Could you be using that time to service members in doing the things that your members typically need. Um, what are your costs that you're currently paying your service vendors? Um, again, because those costs would then shift into our program and make it more efficient for you because now not only are, are, do you still have those costs, but now we're taking that responsibility off of your plate. 
So those are some of the things that you want to definitely take a look at. In the scenario where you currently don't have an ATM at all within the credit union, um, but you want one, then what you really want to look at is what are the opportunities for your members? Um, when you start to think about branch transformation, if you currently don't have opportunities for your members to utilize an ATM at your branches, that means that your members are, are coming into the branch all the time to do transactions that are, again, can be typically done at an ATM. Well, what's the teller cost at that point? When your member comes in to do a withdrawal at a teller versus having them do it that at the ATM, there's a significant cost differential there. And again, when you take those resources at the teller line, what other services can those, mem can those staff members be doing on behalf of your members than doing the simple transactions like a withdrawal type of thing? So those are some of the value, th value propositions of when you take a look at a managed services program, what are the things that you can offload from the credit union onto our shoulders on your behalf to free the credit union up or the free the resources up to be able to, uh, again, provide other services uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to their members. Um, Trey or Carl, I'm sure you, have, you may have other additional insights on the value prop for that, but those are the things that I would kind of concentrate on. Yeah, this is uh, Carl. I think that punch list is really going to vary and, and be greatly dependent upon what you have or don't have today, what challenges you have, and what you're looking to do in the future for your ATMs. And so in short, that's really what you're doing. The punch list is going to vary with, differently with every credit union request that uh, comes out there. So we may be asking specific questions if you're looking at a full service program or the questions may be narrowed down if you're just looking to enhance what you already have in place or improve the services you've got in place today. <clears throat> so a uh, question for, well, any one of you folks, I suppose, um, and, and I hate to put you on the spot, but um, it sounds like it's uh, very much, a, I'll call it like a cafeteria plan, sort of, because all these pieces parts are going to vary, could vary a lot from institution to institution, depending on, you know, what they do or don't want to do in terms of ownership or maintenance or, you know, what, whatever they want to do. Um, so un understood that, you know, in, in credit unions that we've talked to over the years, um, servicing of machines and, and, you know, mostly Diebold and NCR around here, but exceptions, obviously, but the traditional, you know, whether it's through the wall or whatever, full service machine at say a credit union branch, um, you know, sometimes service has been an issue for credit unions where the guy that you're dependent on is covering, you know, he, he's, halfway into New Hampshire next door to us somewhere and got a truck and, you know, cobble together a number of appointments before getting to you or, or on the way or something like that. Um, so what I'm curious about is, and sorry to put somebody on the spot, but how, how does that, if I don't want that headache and I want to offload that onto you folks, how does, does that change? Do you have the same problem uh, getting someone to service that machine or is it different do you use other people how's that part of it work any differently for you than it does for the credit union that owns say a couple machines somewhere yeah and that's kind of a loaded question i think because there's <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah that's okay i mean there, there's so many uh areas that they're i'm sorry about that background noise Let me get rid of that um yeah, so that's kind of a loaded question because it's going to vary by, you know, companies that are out there and, and what kind of coverage they have for the technicians. Um, in our case, we have a nationwide service provision, so we cover most areas. And I think that punch list we're referring to where we're doing a little Q&A and some due diligence back and forth with the individual credit unions will help us determine what kind of coverage we can expect to see. If we're going to have a really excellent response time or if they're technician lives an hour and a half away and we have to factor that into the discussions. It, it'll be a very transparent discussion on our capabilities with each and every institution that we talk to. Uh, but for the most part, we do have a, a fairly uh, good coverage nationwide for most of the states in the country. 
Great. And I'll, I'll add one more thing into that. Depending upon the technology that you have or, or basically the type of ATM that you have, um, from a servicing standpoint, and, and Carl and Trey, keep me honest here, there may be opportunities where we can actually remotely get into that machine to do a diagnostic or in some cases repair, uh, depending upon the issue. Uh, and again, that is really dependent upon the technology that you have or, or what the type of ATM that you have. But uh, Carl or Trey, that is one of the things that, that you guys have the ability to do, correct? Yeah, Mark, I was going to say that's probably that's something that kind of puts us above. Um, I don't want to say, you know, look, there's there's problems with service companies um, uh, armored in general. I mean, you, you may have one armored branch that is very good at a Brinks or a Loomis, and then you may have another one that just really is a constant problem child. Uh, we continually work with those guys. Once again, even though it may be headaches, we'll st we still take those headaches on. But to Mark's point, uh, we have some remote capabilities to go into a machine, to pull journals, to change marketing screens, to really truly see what the problem is all the way down to the, the subcomponent level. So if it's a receipt printer or if it's a depositor or a dispenser, um, we can actually go in and reboot the machine remotely. So what does that do? That, that basically around 60% of the time, we, we're reducing our service calls with a technician on site 60% of the time because we can remote into that unit. And it's all about uptime, right? So we have to make sure that those machines stay up as much as possible. If we do have to send a technician, we're arming them with knowledge and hopefully parts. And it's a one trip, which means less uptime and not having to make repeat trips back with new parts. And, hey, I assessed the situation first time around. Now I got to go back with the right parts we assist them in making sure that they're going out trying to fix it that first time around. Great. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Mark, hi, this is Michelle. I, um, I know one of the things that we were looking at before, which we had come to you on, was in regards to a lot of managed services are, a, yes, another program outside of your current program, but also you're taking it away from your current um, transactional volumes per se. So I think one of the great things that we found out from you was that, you know, you will be, PSEU will be um, um, processing those transactions to keep them local. I think that was one of the biggest benefits we found with this manager's programs than any other programs we had looked at previously. Yes, yeah, so great point, Michelle. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so what uh, Michelle's referring to is the ability for us to be able to process true us on us transactions without having the need for those transactions to route through any other network. Um, because as we all know, if a transaction hits a network, there's extra fees involved with that. In our world, your, tr your members at your ATMs are considered true us on us transaction so that there's no need for that extra network um, fee involved in that. The other advantage of our program is, you know, one of the things when it comes to ATMs is when you have a foreign card holder that goes to your credit union ATM, those transactions earn you revenue, whether, you know, in, in a surcharge standpoint or um, in a interchange standpoint. In our world, both the surcharge and the interchange remain with the credit union. So whatever surcharge or interchange revenue you're earning today will be the same interchange and surcharge revenue you're earning tomorrow. We, me, or we and our partners do not um, retain any of that revenue on your part. So that all goes to the credit. So on, it's a little distanced from uh, ATM outsourcing and maintenance, but on a related note um, and following up to what you were just saying, Mark, um, you know, when we were looking around, so, so we enjoy in Vermont, and I think I shared with you that before, Mark, that, you know, we have this uh, Falcon ATM network that um, ABC is a part owner of, along with uh, two other credit union entities and three community banks. And um, it has served us well, and it's, you know, on us ATM sharing between those entities, because all of the machines of those entities and the credit unions that we service by ABCU 
we're all under the same, uh, well, originally it was a network many years ago, and currently it's akin to a bank holding company uh, on the processor. And so we'll be doing that same thing with PSCU, as we've discussed before, um, in an effort to, you know, have those transactions route locally instead of coming back to um, the card issuer as foreign transactions. Um, you know, so I think everybody benefits, at least in Vermont, in the small network that we've got, everybody benefits from sharing, well, those that want to, sharing each other's ATM machines so that they can provide, you know, on us access to each other and deposit taking where it's full service machines. Um, and, you know, providing each other with, you know, a small transaction fee to make it worth people's while to, for wear and tear of the machine and maintenance and, you know, handling a, a deposit when there is that kind of case and whatnot. Um, but, you know, we've had something like, I think it's about, and Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, something like, I want to say 150 locations in the state. I'm not sure if that's the right number in it. Yeah, it was like 125 currently. It, yeah. it fluctuates too over the years and, you know, people move machines and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's been helpful to particularly smaller institutions who only have no machine or, you know, very few machines for them. Um, so a and, and talking about smaller institutions, Mark, a question that uh, you made me think of is, and it, this is probably another one of those, you know, no black and white answer, but, um, you know, when you look at the typical institutions across the country that are utilizing, they're, they're, they're wanting to outsource their ATM first and or second line service, or maybe ATM ownership and upgrading and whatever, they want to do. Um, you know, when you're looking at, and I'll say Vermont sized institutions, and we have some large ones, but you know, the kind of institutions that we're mostly focused on here for our discussion today, you know, might own a couple ATM machines, you know, one per, per branch that they have, maybe they have a cash dispenser out in a convenience store or something like that. When you have, and maybe you haven't been doing this long enough to have an answer, but when you have an in, a, a community-based institution like that, bank or credit union approach you, and that's the scenario, you know, they own a couple full-service machines currently, maybe they have a cash dispenser or two out in the countryside someplace. Is there like a common picture that you see of what they're looking for? Or most of these institutions just looking for someone else to do the servicing or do they actually want to unload the ownership of those machines so they don't have to do upgrading down the road or is it all over the place yeah that's a another loaded question you're Sorry. Them today no no it's great so the, the the trend that we're seeing and and again one of the main reasons why we implemented this solution in the first place is you know i've been I've been in this business 26 plus years ish. Uh, about 20 of them were dedicated to ATMs. So I, I've been in the ATM business as, as Carl and Trey have been and Lori as well for, for many, many years. So I, I kind of been there, done that and, and seen a few things. Um, when, when, when I talk about managed services, especially for um, small to mid-sized financial institutions, the, the, the trend that we're seeing is, hey, we hate ATMs. You know, that, that's one thing that's, that's, that's constantly changing, whether it's regulatory. You know, a, a couple of years, everyone had to jump through hoops to go through um, processes for the American Disabilities Act. So there was, there was huge, we all had to jump through hoops for that. Then came EMV. Then came the sunsetting of Windows and, and, and upgrading now to Windows 10. So there's always things that are having to happen at the terminal levels that make financial institutions head spins. So the trend that we're seeing really is, hey, how do we get out of the business? Because, you know, in 99% in of the time, ATMs are a resource drain. They're an expense to the credit union. It's very rare, especially in the, in the small to, to mid financial, um, uh, financial institution space, it's very rare to have a very to have a profitable ATM program. So it's a financial drain, no matter what, on a, on a credit union. It's a resource drain, again, especially in those smaller institutions where, 
you know, people wear multiple hats. Okay. Um, I've, I've talked to credit unions where not only is the CEO, he's also a teller <laughs> um, or, or, you know, something along those lines. So we're really starting to see the trend of, Hey, get us out of the ATM business, because again, we'd rather be spending our resources um, elsewhere. We know that it's, it's an expense no matter what, but if we can get gain the efficiencies of having somebody else deal with the thing that we hate the most, there's where we're going to see our efficiencies. So I, I, I kind of hope I answered that question with the trend that again, we're really starting to see a trend on, Hey, let's, let's totally outsource the program and focus our needs elsewhere. Well, that does kind of echo uh, my uneducated assumption that, you know, well, maybe ITMs are a little different animal because of more complexity in the consumer interface and all that kind of functionality and all that kind of stuff. But the regular, I'll call it, um, you know, full service ATM and cash dispensers, I've just assumed that unless you're the largest of financial institutions, nobody wants to have a giant investment in a fleet of ATMs. Yeah. It's a depreciating asset and it's gonna, it's like, it's like the car you drive off the lot. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it's on its way to having things go wrong with it and into its last day of service, whenever that is. And so. And not um, only that, <clears throat> you, you mentioned, um, the, you know, the, the, the cost, Every couple of years, when the government or a network or a prop comes out with something else, now you're spending tons of money to either upgrade. And if a machine can't be upgraded, now you have to replace right. when you, you weren't planning on that. That wasn't part of your vision when you had this ATM. You know, you were hoping to be able to, to I think the point you were trying to make, drive it into the ground, you know, use it for every last drop. But because of changes that were outside of your control, now you're forced to do something else. Well, in the world that we're living in under managed services, that wouldn't be your responsibility. Um, you know, we would, be, we would be doing that all on your behalf when those changes or regulatory requirements come through. Um, yeah, you know, we can always, we can build that into the processes and, and, and the costs that you have to where you don't have the headache of having to manage any of that. Um, I, I, I hate to be asking all the questions, but I keep thinking of them. So sorry. Um, but hopefully no more that are putting you on the spot. Um, I know, and I don't know which one of you this is for, but earlier on, you mentioned, you know, a broad variety of ATM types and uh, makes and models and all of that kind of stuff. Is there a, um, I don't know if I want to say limit, but you know, the, the, the brands of ATMs that you're working with or de deploying, I guess I'll call it. Is it mostly concentrated in the traditional, I don't know, around here it'd be Debold and NCR or are there many other options? Yeah, there's uh, that was, that was me, Carl, that had that comment, I believe. Thanks, and uh, yeah, so the majority of ATMs out there, the brands that you're going to see from a service and deployment type perspective, that you may or may not have at all these different financial institutions it's going to be the top three or four, which are going to be Debold, uh, NCR, Nautilus CSUN, uh, an up and coming one called GRG, and also some Triton in the retail off premise type location. So those are your top five ATM manufacturers, whether it's, you know, full blown FI type of equipment ATMs, or if it's just little retail style. Uh, and that's what you're going to see the majority of out there. And the levels of, of serviceability from the maintenance perspective are fairly equal when it comes to hardware maintenance on any of those. Um, where they become limited and change from one to the other is gonna be dependent upon um, the remote capability of one brand over another because of the software restrictions that some of the ATM manufacturers put on every third party company in the country, no matter who you are. Um, so there are some that we can do a lot more with remotely there are some that we can do a lot less with remotely, but we can service uh, all of them from a hardware perspective and keeping them up and running. I was going to ask you, Carl, if there is ever or if there are some instances where a financial institution comes to you and says, we have, I don't know, a handful of this brand or this model of this brand or something. And you have to say, we don't touch those because we've had such a bad experience with them. They're not reliable, you know, that kind of stuff. No, if we say we can't touch it, it's because we don't have capability to get parts or, or support from the manufacturer. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, an example of that would be not in the ATM world offhand, but something that comes to mind would be like uh, cash recyclers from Glory or De La Rue. You know, we would be promoting other products and services for those unrelated to this program, but just as an example from a hardware perspective and maintenance that we would say we can't do that because we're not going to be able to get the parts from those companies. We're not going to be able to get the support and neither is any other third party out there. So uh, ATMs are a little freer in that regard. There's always resources and avenues to be able to get the equipment, whether it's uh, directly from the manufacturer or in this country or out of country. We've had to get very resourceful. I've been here at Absolute for 26 years doing this. And before this company, I was four years doing it as a technician. So I've got over 30 years of figuring out how to, to become MacGyver and, and put things together and put those thought experiences and resources to a much bigger, broad scale with the company that uh, we're running today. Well, my understanding, because I have watched a new version of that show lately, is that it just got canceled. So hopefully <laughs> you don't get canceled and you continue on in your role for a long time to come. Yeah, well, I can't <laughs> say they all make good decisions. Right. See, that was actually my nickname in the, in the military when I was in the Army before all of this ATM stuff was uh, Shriver MacGyver. <laughs> I was the guy out here fixing some of the craziest stuff. And they were like, "How did you? where did you come up with that? I'm pulling stuff off of trucks to fix radios. I mean, whatever we wow. had to do, we did it. So. I have oh. a couple questions. Can, can I just jump in here with a question or two? Please do. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand your relationship with PSCU. So are you a third party outsourced vendor for them? Uh, well, in, in my case, uh, I, I'm working with ATD. My, my company is absolute financial. And I'm the one that's uh, a resource to provide equipment and maintenance options and different things like that. Okay, but Mark, uh, they, they, they can speak to PSCU and in regards to that relationship and, and how that works together. Yeah, so I, I, I can jump in on that one, Carl. Um, so PSCU is the service provider for the association for both card servicing and ATMs. Um, this is our program. Um, we we're kind of the, the main, uh, I guess, player when it comes to this whole process. Um, under PSCU, we've um, contracted with our partner, Carl and Trey, ATD and, and, and um, um, Absolute Fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. Sorry, Carl. Sorry, um, Carl. But those are, those are our partners in this endeavor. Now, we're going to be working with the through this through the association so that again it's really the and and joe correct me and and you may want to talk about you know the structure of what we're of how we're working on this but this is actually going to be um rolled out through the association um on how that works so it's it's really pscu's program and we're utilizing Carl and Trey as our partners in the solution. So I, I, I hope that kind of answered the question. Yeah, I'm, it's just a very basic question. So you're a, a PSCU employee? I am, yes. Okay, oh, so well, Lori and I- saw your shirt, Mark. I didn't see yeah. that before, so. Okay. So yeah, Lori and I are PSCU employees. So if we sign up with ABCU, you come with a PSCU package? Correct. And if we say we just love everything that's been happening with our ATMs for the last year, we don't want anything to change, then we might not run into you again, as, as sad as that would be. Um, <laughs> sure. But if we said, you know, we're done with our ATMs, we want to move to the video, then you'd come in and you'd bring your associates and you'd get us set up and maybe even let us rent equipment from you, um, all under the PSCU banner. Is that right? Yes. Um yeah, I mean, there's still some particulars that I guess the association and us need to, to work out. But yes, in essence, that is the way that that will work. Okay. And so in terms of the, the cost, and we're, it's lovely that you have a menu, a la carte menu, uh, because I, I hesitate to even think about what it what would be that we could do. What we need to do is really simple and keep our costs down mm -hmm. because we're real small. We're a low-income credit union. Um, so in my our analysis, and Linda um, Godfrey and I have been trying to analyze a few different options. We 
we are taking ABCU's pricing at its face value and just assuming there's no additional upcharge for the ATM services. Is that right? We haven't talked about that yet, but I would say that's probably a fair conclusion. We're making ATM, um, you know, access or service available, um, you know, as part of our relationship with PSCU, because we think that's a great option. It may not work for everybody, um, but so there would we be wanted a to lay on the table level. as an option. There'd be a basic level of ATM service involved in the. Yeah, and we're ATM. also going to use this program, Kate, to kind of get creative. Like, there's one credit union that we're talking to that doesn't want to own a machine. They don't want to lease a machine. They don't want anything to do with it, but they still would like to have a machine at a location. And so we're getting creative and trying to figure out can we utilize this program ourselves? Mm. And we own a machine and put it in that location. We'd have to go through all the same gyrations that Mark was talking about, considerations that Mark was talking about as far as what's the transaction volume going to be, what's the same thing you consider, what's the surcharge potential going to be, so on and so forth, to determine whether we could make it work financially in that particular location. The other thing that we've talked about is utilizing a program like this, making it possible for us to say that, you know, maybe um, your credit union and, I don't know, two or three other credit unions all see value in having a machine at, you know, that location over there, but none of you can justify it individually. Um, and I'm thinking of, extreme example, probably not, not appropriate, but the most obvious one I can think of is, you know, there's no credit union that has an ATM machine in a touristy location, like the middle of Stowe, let's say, like, because that's for you gentlemen out of state, very touristy, scary. Um, and so a lot of surcharge potential there and all of that kind of thing, but there are also credit union people that live in that area too but probably no credit union individually is going to have enough potential to warrant planting a machine there on their own. Maybe we can do something on a group kind of basis where, you know, maybe with assistance from a, a couple of the interested credit unions, we can cobble something together to, you know, put a machine in a location like that. And that may not be a good example, but those kinds of possibilities that, that we're looking at as kind of like the unique applications for this for our purposes but what it's what mark's program that he's put together is intended for is you know more on more directly replacing or taking over responsibility for your kinds of machines got it so this is just a feature of if we sign up with psu we have the advantage of all these resources right. and a lot of right. options great right. right. okay thank you so I guess at the very basis of what we offer is just terminal driving services. So if you come on board with PSEU for, for ATMs, terminal driving is the base solution. Everything else we've been talking about is kind of above and beyond that. If again, if you wanted to uh, you know, go beyond us driving your terminals on your behalf, then we get into things like the managed services program that we just outlined. Got it. Okay. And the driving is already included in the pricing that you got on a monthly basis. Through the association. Right. Uh, for, those you right. for those who have machines, right? Yeah. Right. And, and in case it's based on what you currently have set up today. So, you know, your current breakout does show, you know, the same communication as you had selected prior. So. <coughs> Anything else? Any other questions for Carl or Trey or Lori, myself or Joe? Any anything else, Michelle? I think you did a good job covering everything, folks. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, we're on the you know leading edge of this discussion, as you can tell, uh, but we want to take <coughs> this opportunity since. Uh, Mark and company are so experienced in this area and whatnot to make sure that we make credit aware of it. 
Um, so I'm kind of embarrassed to not know or to have to ask Mark if a credit union or one that's viewing a recording later on says, okay, I'm intrigued. You know, how do I find out how much it's going to cost for me to offload the first and second line support for that machine I already have over there or to mm -hmm. replace that machine or whatever? What's step number one that we have to do? So... Um, that was one of the logistics that um, we were going to talk through in terms of who wants to be the main, uh, I guess, go between. I mean, if it's you as the association, we can provide you the information that we the, need. The, as I recall from some prior discussion and that one situation that we were discussing previously, it's probably going to start out with some kind of questionnaire kind of thing of, yeah. you know, does the machine so, already exist? What's the traffic? Those kinds of basics, right? Yeah, and I, I think I sent that information over to you. Um, again, there's, there's, two set, there's two basic scenarios. If you have an existing ATM today and you're looking for us to take over ownership, buy it, replace it with latest, greatest technologies, yeah, there's some information that we need on that particular terminal, where it's located, um, what's your current service contract today, how many times do you replenish the machine with how much money, um, you know, those types of things. Is there any book value left on the ATM? Those types of things. And that's part of that spreadsheet that I had sent you, uh, Joe, that again, to fill out if you have an existing machine. Um, if there's no machine on premise and you're basically starting from scratch, it's a little bit of, it's kind of the same. We need the location of where you want the machine. Um, what kind of technology are you kind of looking for just to kind of give us a, a starting place? Are you looking for a cash dispenser or do you want to take deposits? It can be as simple as that. Just to kind of give us some starting point on putting together some type of a proposal. Um, unfortunately, we don't have set pricing available because again, everything is, is really dependent upon locations and servicers that go into those locations and what you want your service contract to be because it may be different for every credit union under the program. So we don't have anything set. So we're going to need that kind of questionnaire information filled out so that we have at least a starting point. Um, from there, we'll work with Carl and Trey um, to put together some type of um, financial options for you. Those options could be everything from the Cadillac version of a new ATM all the way down to your an existing ATM if you have it. So again, we'll provide you um, options. And then from there, we can narrow down your specific needs based upon location. And a final thing you remind me of, Mark, is that I assume that for the typical on-premise machine at a credit union location, that it probably makes more sense um, for the credit union to be, even though it's not servicing the machine itself, but for the credit union to be ordering the cash for that machine than it is to outsource yeah. that part too. Yeah, and I, I referenced that earlier. So yes, I mean, unfortunately, cash is expensive. And mm -hmm. it's not that we can't order the cash on your behalf, but if we're, you, if we're doing those orderings for us under our program, you're paying a premium for that cash. What we prefer is that you as the credit union, individual credit unions place the order for the cash. We'll still take care of it. We'll do the pickups and the managing and the servicing and the terminal aspect of it. But if you, t if you place the orders under your fed order, you get, you, you get better terms than what we would. And, and Carl or Trey, I hope I explained that. Um, okay. You guys are, are the ones that would be doing that, but um, I don't know if you have any, if you have any other different thoughts on that Carl or Trey, but, or if I explained it, okay. <laughs> That just means you're not paying interest to borrow someone else's cash. You've already have cash. Just pay, uh, pay you guys, pay us, whatever, to deliver it and, and transport it where it needs to go. That's going to save you some money. Right? Yeah, it'd be a much cheaper rate, correct. Uh, any other comments or questions? Anybody? No, I just, I just want to thank um, Mark and everyone for joining us today. I think on, on behalf of Kate and other credit unions on the call, I just know many credit unions have put their hands out to us before and just said, hey, you know, 
I do or don't want this location. We've had a lot of credit unions close a lot of their host locations, just not having the staff to go service those locations. But then on the other hand, you know, the companies that we had initially worked with before or, or looked at before, it just wasn't the local transaction that you want to see those ATMs um, be able to utilize the services um, that you currently have in play. And so I think that's it's just the great option to be able to still have those transactions local to your members, which is such a big deal. And it's still on the program that you're currently utilizing right? Um, rather than just throwing a machine there that some vendor kind of came in and said, Hey, I'll throw a machine there for you. Um, and then you not earn anything on it any longer. So, but I thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. If any, if anyone else has any other questions, if you want to filter them, I guess, through, I guess, Michelle, is that, yeah, myself or, or Joe. Yep. Or yeah. Justine. Yeah, yeah, any one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll send them on to Mark. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Tracy, uh, Cam, uh, Carl, yeah. and Lori, and Mark. <laughs> I was trying to remember you all. <laughs> you guys have a great week and a great weekend. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.